Now comes the second ayah. And this is rather more profound. This is discussing the executive. The executive head. You may call him caliph, head of the state. Here in United States you have the president. And so on. Or in the parliamentary system. It's the prime minister. So on. Whosoever is there. Now what is the sequence of obedience in Islamic state? Who are to be obeyed? Ya yuhalladheena amanu ati'u allaha wa ati'u rasoola wa ulil amre minkum. O you who believe, or O you who profess to believe, who claim to believe, obey Allah and obey the messenger and those who are placed in position of authority from amongst you. Now there are three, Allah, Rasul, and Ulul Amr Minkum. Now see how beautifully a differentiation has been made. The verb Ati'u has been repeated twice, but not with the third. There could be two other forms. Ati'u could be taken out, out of the bracket as a common factor. Ati'ullah wa Rasulah wa Ulul Amr Minkum. Not to repeat again. Atiullah wa Rasula wa Ulil Abrimin kum within the bracket. All the values are multiplied by the the value which is outside the bracket. Or it could be repeated all the three times. Atiullah wa Atiu Rasula wa Atiu Ulil Abrimin kum. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has discarded these two modes of expression, and He has taken Atiullah wa Atiu Rasul wa Ulil Abrimin kum. What does it mean? The itah, the obedience to Allah. And messenger is absolute and permanent, unconditional. You have to obey them anyhow. These are the two basic sources of Islamic law, fundamental sources of the Islamic law. Kitab and Sunnah, as we call it, the Book of Allah, that is in place of Allah now. And number two, the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that is in place of Rasul. Atiullah wa atiyu Rasul, and these two are fundamental, and these are permanent. You can't question the authority of Allah, and you can't question the authority of the Messenger. You can't have a dispute or a difference of opinion with Allah, and in the same way, you can't have a dispute or a difference of opinion from Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But for the third, this verb atiyu has not been repeated. There is some basic difference. Wa ulil amre bin kum, and also you obey the ulil amr who have been placed in authority. Now, how have they been placed in authority? That is given in the first ayah. Inna Allah ya murukum an tuadul amanati ila ahliha. You select them, you elect them, but you know you should be honest and sincere. You should give these positions of authority to those only who are worthy of it, who are capable to deliver deliver the goods, not to your relatives, not to your tribesmen, not to somebody who can do some personal favor to you. No, this is dishonesty. In sincerity to Allah and the Islamic State, so you have to give this amana to the people, to the persons who are capable of holding it, this position. Now, when they are in the position, now you have placed them in authority. You have selected Abu Bakr as Khalifa. He was not appointed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, nor he was nominated by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was by mutual consultations that the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they they elected him. So actually, now this is. Not Mamur bin Allah. Previously, the Prophet who was Mamur bin Allah, he was the Caliph. You had to accept him anyhow. But now that institution of prophethood has come to an end in the person of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. After him, no one is Mamur bin Allah. No one can claim to be appointed by Allah subhanahu wa taala. Everyone, you know, derives his mandate or authority from the people, from the community. Because they have elected him, they have selected him. But now, from them, you can disagree. Number one, they must be Muslims. Ulul Amre min kum. What does it mean? Muslims can never accept from their hearts, at least, that they be governed by non-Muslims. Well, if they are compelled, if they have been captured. If they have been conquered, if they have been rendered helpless, it's something else. But a Muslim can never accept from the depths of the heart 
دی اتھارٹی آف اے نان مسلم اولی لمر بن کم ہی ہیز ٹو بی فارم امنگ یو ہی ہیز ٹو بی مسلم ناٹ اونلی دی ہیڈ آف دی اسٹیٹ ہیز ٹو بی مسلم دی لیجسلیٹر آلسو کین بی اونلی فرام مسلم نو نان مسلم کین جوائن دی لیجسلیچر آف این اسلامک اسٹیٹ بیکاز دی سورسز آف دی لیجسلیشن آر دی بک آف اللہ اینڈ دی سن آف دی پروفٹ ہی بلیو ان نائٹر آف دیم سو ہاؤ کین ہی بی ایسوسیٹیڈ ود دی پروسیس آف لیجسلیشن اینڈ اشتہار دی پروسیس آف لیجسلیشن ناؤ ان دی ماڈرن اسلامک اسٹیٹ ول بی اشتہار How can a non-Muslim be assigned this responsibility of ishtihad and legislating and, and deriving and inferring from the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet when he doesn't believe in them? So they have to be min kum. If you take this American system, the, the congressmen and your senators, they have to be Muslim. If this, if this becomes an Islamic state, may Allah do it. Then you know only Muslims. Head of the state, Muslim. President has to be Muslim. No non-Muslim can be associated. Non-Muslims will remain in an Islamic state a protected minority. They will remain a protected minority. They will not be equal citizens to the Muslims in the Islamic state. This is a very bitter pill to swallow. But we have to see to the reason, to the principles. This is the basic difference between Islamic state and the secular state. In a secular state, religion is just irrelevant to, this, to the affairs of the state. It's a private affair only. You can be a Hindu, you can be a Muslim, you can be a, you can be a Jew, you can be something else, you can be a Buddhist, go to your synagogues, go to your mosque, go to your temple, go to anywhere you like, but regarding the affairs, the collective affairs of the community and the state, there will be no reference whatsoever to any religion, to any revealed law, to any revealed guidance, nothing of the sort. But Islamic state is based on Islam. It's based on the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet So only those who believe in it can be assigned the offices and the positions of authority and only they can be assigned the responsibility of legislation. But now there can be a difference of opinion. Everybody had the right to differ from Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala Everybody, every Muslim had, had the right to differ from Umar radiallahu ta'ala. Because Umar was not the prophet of Allah. He was not infallible. Abu Bakr was not a messenger of Allah. He was not infallible. And you know there was a difference of opinion regarding the lands which were captured by the Muslims. The big, big lands, big countries, Syria and Iraq and Iran and Egypt. Now some of the some of the uh, fellow Muslims, you know, and the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu they demanded that this is mal ghanima this is booty. Now divide it amongst us. You can keep only one-fifth to the state. For the state, one-fifth. And the four-fifth have to be distributed among people who were, who were fighting in the field. Hazrat Umar said, no. This is not mal ghanima This is mal fay and this will go totally to the battle mal of the Muslims collective. They will be owned collectively by the Muslim Ummah, not distributed. And this would have become the, the biggest feudal system of human history, you know, a few thousand people. They conquered all these countries. This was the ishtihad of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala. But you know, there was a different opinion. Matter was discussed. A special committee was assigned. Five Sahaba from Aus. The tribe of Os and five from the tribe of Khadraj, they were formed into a committee. And then you, they consulted and then they approved that ishtihad of Umar radiallahu ta'ala is correct. And that it was the consensus of the Muslims now. This, that is why there is a this differentiation of lands. This is Ushri, this is Kharaji. If a Muslim owns a land, piece of land, a farm, then it is Ushri. Only one tenth or one twentieth of the produce will be taken. But if it is Kharaji, it is the collective property of the Muslim Ummah. It is not the personal property of any Muslim individual. Then you know, maybe 50%. Now they are tenants. Whosoever are working over there, they are tenants. They are not owners of that field. 
or, or that farm or that piece of land and they will pay even 50%. Rawal will go straight, kharaj, it is called kharaj, not question. So this is an example I gave you. If there, can, if there is some difference of opinion between you and the people who are at the helm of affairs, what to do then? Where to go? If I am differing from the opinion of Abu Bakr, what to do now? He says, I have deduced this from Quran and Sunnah. I say, no, I differ from your opinion. I deduce in this way. My inference is this. Now, فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ Now, here, a common citizen of the Islamic State and the head of that state, they are at par. The decision will be given by Allah and his messenger. Because only the obedience to Allah and the messenger was absolute. What does it mean? Now it has to be decided by the judiciary. Whether which opinion is more correct. More near the spirit of the book of Allah. And the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. If you really believe in Allah. And if you really believe in the last day, this is the best way to conduct your state, affairs of this community and state. And this is going to produce the best results. In the end you will find this is the best way.